Okay, thank you. Yes, um, bulk of fish is about to investigate chemical pollution by developing fish monitoring. And I think that's uh, one of the most important things. What we are doing is, and say, and maybe the, the conclusion is that we will all the time need to develop monitoring in one way or another when we are dealing with chemicals. And the background for that is that we are today using much more chemicals than we ever had done before in our society. And hundreds and many hundreds of them are reaching the market every year. So there is a continuous need to improve what we are doing. So what we um, to study biological effects caused by hazardous chemicals. We are not dealing with everything. We are dealing just with fish. And to be precise, we are very much dealing with one species of fish. And this particular project is called bulk of fish. And the purpose of using this one is that we find it everywhere along the coastline. And it's viviparous, that is, it gives birth to living creatures. It actually holds babies for five months, if I can say in a popular way. It's uh, used uh, for, for many uh, years in, in Sweden and for some years in Denmark and Germany and also in other places in monitoring purposes. And what are we doing? We are trying to find out if the fish are healthy on an individual basis. And then also looking at fish population level and the fish community level. We also include chemists into this work and do an integrated approach to find out whether or not we have problems out there. What have we seen? Uh, what we have done in the, in the bulk of fish project is to try to collect all data we have about eel part, so that also uh, share our data and other data in, the, in a collective base, database. This has also been done in collaboration with the BEAST project we will hear about a little bit later. A very big thing or a huge amount of work that we have put down here is to use technology with the, uh, strange word ecotoxicogenomics. It means that we can, and what we have done, look into gene responses. So we are dealing with many, many thousands of different responses. And this has given us an insight to new functions and new, new, new problems, if you wish to say. We need that, mainly because we have all these new chemicals. What, what we see and that bothers us somewhat is, for, for example, uh, intersex. Intersex is, uh, uh, what, what is that? It, you have egg cells in testes. So what it, does it mean? It means that the fish has problems with their hormones. It means that male fish do not function anymore as male fish. Um, this is a, a huge problem, uh, in, and one major problem with this kind of compounds causing this or these effects are that it's, they are not so easy to, to see, and, but they can have huge problems. Uh, it can cause us a lot of problems for the fish populations. Using eel pout means that we can also look at um, their outcome. Their, their, it's called reproductive success. How many living uh, the fecundity, how many larvae are s fit to, to survive, etc. Uh, it's known, has been known for, for some time, that there is some problem in certain areas, that uh, quite many of, of the, the larvae are malformed or they are dead. And in the bulk of fish projects, it has been looked into and used the eel pout population model. And in fact, there are uh, disturbances in certain areas as large as uh, it seems as if they actually can affect the population sizes and, and function. Also within the, in the bulk of this project, as we are using yield partner, of, has been done for some years in certain countries, in these monitoring programs, we can see that the yield part seems to migrate a little bit more than we thought before. Maybe it's wrong to say stronger mi migration. They will not uh, swim from the southern parts of Baltic Sea to the northern parts within a few weeks or so, but they do migrate a little bit more than we thought before. And it has, of course, a Im practical impact in signing field monitoring programs. Um, it, it is, uh, then, a, a has been f a, a very good project for us to come together uh, and also to. We have definitely, the, within the different countries, there's seven different laboratories involved. We have been very much in contact with different stakeholders. And uh, at least in Sweden and Denmark and in Germany, this has 
uh, definitely uh, brought this concept forward. Um, what's next uh, and what will this type of um, project lead uh, for after um, the bonus plus program, bar after bark of fish? It le it, it's the, this genomic work that has been done within this project that has created very many new um, knowledge about different uh, toxic compounds in, in fish and some of these fish health parameters that has been used will in future be involved in you. It's particularly when it comes to immune responses and when it comes to oxidative stress responses it indicates that uh, it um, will be included. Also I should say by ending this uh, that the the eel pout has shown us that it is possible to, to look at transformation of pollutants from um, the, the adult female to the offspring. And that there is a, a transport of, of pollutants and apparently affecting the health of, of the larvae. And who needs the information you have already read? Thank you very much. Thank you.